All right, hey guys, this is going to be a video on Grawl starts with lock-in. We're going to be playing Platinum AI again to give us a little bit more of a real game feel, but then I can run through things a little easier just like the Azora video. So, we always got to launch the game, but uh, this one's going to be Grawl. Grawl gives you a lot of options, right? You can flower, you can do any tier 6, right? Excuse me. You can any, any tier 6, a lot of tier 3s and 4s, you can upgrade into them. Um, there's a lot of good opportunity with Grarl, if I can find it here. Okay, so we've got a couple options right now, actually. The one I'm looking at the most in this role is actually going to be Windhawk. Start with Grarl. The reason why I'm liking this right now more than like Lord of Death is Windhawk is really, really strong early game, and I've got Tempest. Tempest really buffs the Windhawk and makes this a very good roll pre-10 and beyond even. I have a tank in Grarl and Badger. And I've got extra magic damage eventually in Lord of Death. I could also theoretically take Aqua here if you think you want to try to end, end the game early. Because Aqua buffs that Windhawk damage and I believe the Tempest ability damage as well. I personally think, though, I'm going to take this game later. Most games in higher ELO do, so I'm going to go one of these two units. What I'll do now, though, is I start Gararl, and I push two workers. And then you have to send a Snail or a King up to get to 85, 86 value for the next wave. I'll just drop a single Windhawk. And then I'll pretty easily get a violet on four, three by the way chat this is a, a, a sub optimal positioning of aqua very sub optimal you want it at least mid lane uh, at least mid lane you could theoretically with this roll go I think five worker and then windhawk on three but I would recommend just, just sending doing the Windhawk right away. You'll be more consistent. You won't leak to ascend on a snail on two. And then you can worry about pushing after, right? Most lower elo, it's going to be income, 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 send, right? So that's kind of my recommendation. So what I'll do here, though, see if they send me. Remember, I need, I only need 180. So, you know, 180 minus 130 is I need 50. So if I theoretically got another snail out, I could 5 worker here. So I'll have 100 for next wave. I'm going to 5 worker, and I'll get the Windhawk out next. So there we go. Got 5 worker. Got my Violet. I'm a little under this wave, but that's completely fine. For anyone who doesn't know, though, yes, you can do calculations with basic math in chat. So it allows you to more quickly do mathematic calculations to figure out if you hold or leak or not. No. Um, so what I'll do here now is I'll probably place just a single Tempest up front because he'd saved on me. I don't think the Pyro is going to have much for value, honestly, to send on four. But I'd rather be safe than sorry and not be undervalued. What I'm looking at now, though, is I think wave 5 is my next best play. He's got a Fire Archer, which is really good next, as well as a Fire Elemental, which is also really good next. I think 5 and 6 are my, my best chances of leaking my guy. So I'd rather play safe here and place the Tempest and make sure I'm on value and then go for something a little bit, uh, a little bit stronger of a send. The Violet, though, that, that uh, ability is really the big damage dealer for Violet. Very similar to Zeus, Violet doing both magic and impact damage covers a lot of your weaknesses early in the game. So that's why Violet, send, Violet starts for a long time were so powerful. So I got a 60 cent. I'm easily going to push 2 off of this. I have no reason holding 5 or 6 right now. I see it goes a second Fire Archer. So what I'll probably do is something like a Fiend, because I'm trying to deal as much damage as possible, as quickly as possible. And try to kill the Fire Archers and the Fire Elemental. 
Now, he very well could go a tank, and the tank is, a, is an option for him. But um, with the current build they have, I really don't think they will. Now, seven workers is a lot, and I probably won't push it all now until, um, until like, wave eight. My thought process is, though, try to leak him here. I'm going to shift my remaining Mythium because he's also really bad on six, and I think I might be able to get him more on six than I do on five. And it's not gaining me any value to send here. So let's see what they build. Ooh, they go Bone Crusher and Buckler. So Buckler is good next on six, but really bad um, on six is the B Crusher. Because it's fortified, it's going to get killed pretty quickly to impact. I got King Ups here, that's great. I'm not going to push though because I'm already, I know, overly pushed. And I need some value for next wave. I'm gonna send just a single king out, a single snake, uh, lizard. What I'm gonna do is finish out some of this uh, tempest. What I'll probably do is, if I can, upgrade this tempest for next, and then I'll upgrade this tempest if they don't go till eight. And if they go nine, I'll probably drop a second windhawk here. But as chat asked, so Grawl is only good enough to sell for insane strategies. For the most part, that is the majority of how I would use Grawl, and I implore most people to use Grawl. It's much better when utilized as a unit to get you to a stronger unit quicker than as anything else. So it looks like he will hold here. If not hold, very close to it. Yep, he'll hold. So he got a, a couple more bucklers here. That's fine. I like now nine the next best. I'm going to send here, though. So I'm just going to be just short of a Leviathan. So what I can do is go... Well, I've got one of two routes. I can go an extra t Tempest and then go a Windhawk, which is fine. And then go for a Leviathan next. Um, but I've gotten uh, King Up and King Up two waves in a row, so I really don't feel that weak here, even though Violet is my like main, main damage dealer. I still feel pretty strong. Just a snail. I will hold a snail. I could have held a snail, I think, without building this extra Tempest in the back, even. We will see, though. I might be uh, eating my own words here in a moment. I really don't have a great tank for this wave, so... We can go dash DPS though next wave, and I'll show you guys what the DPS numbers are like. I'm not going to push off that snail, because I'm, again, already pretty pushed, and I want to send on 9. So, I'm going to save here. Get that Leviathan out, because it's going to really increase my damage dealing a ton. And then I'll probably look to push here. I could have theoretically also gone something like Grarl last wave to be able to sell into something, but you lose 15 gold when you sell Grarl. So that 15 gold, I think, was better spent shifting here and trying to go for a better item and not going workers early um, to then be able to push workers a lot harder later. We'll see, though, on when they send me. If they don't send me here, I'm going to have to kind of save again. So they sent me here, so I'm going to push two workers at least. I'm really good this wave, really good next wave. The next wave I really got to worry is ten. So I'll probably push two, if not three here. That was my second push. Yep, that's my second. I was at seven workers. So I'll push two. Let's see if I can push another here. I think I pushed three. And what I'll do here is send... On nine. I'm just going to send imps. The reason why I'm sending imps to Sand Badgers is the only real tank that uh, is going to get not affected really heavily by that. And uh, I can work around Sand Badger. Sand Badger is going to die pretty quickly to the wave itself, let alone anything else. And then I'm trying to get through Golden Bucklers and Bone Crusher, which imps are going to be good for. Nice thing about imps as well is it creates a spread out where there's two more units that the aquas can hit. 
which is positive. 40 resend. I can push one for sure. Even if it's just king ups. The bot upgraded one of the royal guards, exactly why I send imps. One of the imps gets sniped, that's fine, it still does damage. And I still have got one imp alive. My lizard gets sniped in the background, that's fine. It does its purpose. The other imp's getting sniped, that's fine. It does its purpose. I should still get at least a three creep leak out of him here. And for what it's worth, four creep leak. That's actually not bad. 33%. I sent him. Only 140 here. Imps, while not being income, are still relatively cheap. And then I won't send here because any send I get is just going to get sniped by the, uh, the aquas. Well, any send that I do send, I should say. It's going to get sniped by aquas. And so what I'm doing here now is I'm going to build a second leviathan so I get a little bit more damage out of them. And I'm going to drop another buzz on the right and drop two more buzzes. So one buzz in front to correct my split to go right so that these guys don't die. And I'm going to drop two more buzzes in the back to just basically deal damage because I'm a little under on this wave because I pushed really hard. My plan now for next is to probably go something like Allowance or Overwork, depending on if I can push here or not. We'll see. Another 60 resend. Um, I was correct. My my build went right. The boss went right. And I'm able to just deal damage. I'm going to push two workers and then take Allowance. I think that's my play next wave. Gives me the most potential to scale. I might leak small here, but it's still going to be pretty close. Nope, easy, easy hold. My teammate leaks. This guy's leaking no matter what I did here. So that's why I didn't want to send. He built a serpent, but only a single serpent. No problem. What I'll probably do here is double drop dinos. Because his only magic damage is actually the fire elemental. So I'm going to double drop dinos for now. I want some value on this wave because I pushed pretty hard. Again, push two off a of 60 send. Um, it was a mercenary at least, so that's a positive. But I get to go like this. Get down a Windhawk again. And then, uh... I'll probably sell this one. And get a another Windhawk. Um, on the right, left side here. What I'm going to do now, though, is since I am into the late game, I'm going to re-roll, see what I get for options. Um, I can probably, at this point now, drop the... Grarl, and pick up Aqua Spirit. It gives me better ability damage, which I already have a lot of. I may continue to full send here. My only other question is then, do I want to pick up something like Antler, or do I not? The 120 send here, I'm going to push pretty hard. I'll push three here. I think I'm going to pick up Antler and drop Sand Badger. As much as I like Badger for a lot of my weak waves, um, I think I've got quite a bit of, of arcane tankiness, I guess. But I was able to push pretty hard off that last wave. My guy's leaking pretty good because, again, he's mostly Aquas for magic damage and then a little bit with the Bone, bone Warriors. Then what I'll do next is probably drop um, a antler finally, but I'm going to probably drop it up front. So I get a, a tank line up front because I kind of need tanks up front finally to sustain the uh, Tempests. What that means is I'm going to build it probably right here because I want it to even out the split. I'm still really good next. I probably send 13 now. Both enemies are not particularly strong 13. So I think um, with a bunch of magic damage only being the Aquas and the Fire Archers, as well as his only Swift Tank really being the um, Sea Serpent, I'm looking relatively strong on a send there. And I'll probably decide on what I want to send here in a minute. 
100 resend, I hold this no problem. Push probably two here. As for ascend, I probably am just gonna go something like ogre to sm smash through some of his units. I'm gonna build a another unit there, another unit there, so I get more even splitting. I'm gonna start then. Filling out the Tempest on the right hand side to fully get utilize this buff. Full utilization of this buff is going to be super important here in a moment. Yeah, I think I'll do this. What I'm thinking is I'm probably going to put an antler here and use that to be the antler buff. And then build LODs around it. So he did end up getting the Deep Coiler, which will snipe my Hermit. That's fine. The Hermit was a little bit of a... I don't want to call it a bait, but like I wanted to see if something would attack it. The beauty right now, or kind of the negative, is his Deep Coiler is attacking my um, Ogre, which does kind of stink because my Ogre is a really good damage dealer if it hits King. But um, I'm still fine here. Big leak so far on, uh, on left guy. Right guy, looks like he holds. Yeah, he'll hold. Double Zeus here is really strong, but um, thankfully it's not a huge huge deal. We'll probably now go 15. I'm a little worried by the fact that they sent me an 80 here <clears throat> and not a full send, and I'm a little weak next wave in terms of typing. So my plan is to probably drop like a Lord of Death or something to try to get a little bit of uh, tankiness up front. I also kind of got to prepare for the send that's inevitably coming on uh, on a later wave. What I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to drop a rogue wave and then also adjust split again. Add more to split. Just because I've got 60 gold, I may as well utilize it. This could be a relatively big leak here, depending on what they send me. If they send me Mole Hermit, I'm actually in a little bit of a rough position. Uh, because I don't really have much for the wave. If they send me, you know, more uh, uh, more defensive mercs, I should be fine. Um, they just sent me double double brute. This should be no problem. Um, LOD is not a tank, no, but I can utilize its spawns to kind of tank for me. As you can see there, um, the LOD spawns were kind of in front for a minute there, and uh, we're tanking. I want a small leak here, which is fine. Um, to a 140 send when I have no tank for the wave, I kind of expect to leak. 33% is completely acceptable. I push one worker here because I really need to get a Lord of Death out next wave. With that leak, though, I dropped a little bit in value, so I need to send something that's actually pretty strong here in terms of uh, income. So I think what I'm going to do is going to send Triple Cannoneer with Double Snail. Double uh, lizard, I should say. I get a Lord of Death here. Looks really good. Um, I should now be stronger on this wave to a resend. Because it looks like my teammate is about to get a send here. So he only got a 20 last wave and a 100 on 13. So I need to try to be strong here. I am undervalued. Which is fine. But we're going to have to start looking at when can I kill them. Right? Like when can we kill them. So I really actually like this wave and then... 16, I mean, any wave after this is really pretty solid against my guy. Oh, Hermit didn't get out in time. Darn. Okay, so the 100 resend is actually pretty good for me. 100 resend is really good for me because I'm not particularly strong next. I'm particularly strong on uh, 15, though, because of the Hades. Hades is a very good damage dealer for me. Um, we'll see, though, how much I leak. The Hades not getting any spawns out for a minute there kind of stinks. Okay, gonna leak small. That's fine. Not really small, but it is fine. Both of them leak. 
this is kind of like a, I would say, a lower income game. So this is kind of indicative of how lower income games tend to happen, tend to work. Tend to be a lot of small, slow leaks in the late game. Hermit in this wave would not have died because it was a range wave. Hermit will die next wave now, though. I was hoping to get it out for this wave and, and be better on... It would have been better here because he has a bunch of aquas. We are going to take a little bit more damage because we don't have king ups. But we're fine here. That was an okay leak. We, we ended out okay. I'm going to go white main here because I need tanks at this point. This is a good damage source. I need to get a lot of tanks out really quickly though, post 15. I needed them really a couple of waves ago. Uh, but now is really the time I need to get them out. And I think what we do is we go 17 here. If me and the my teammate can go 17, I think we both should be okay. My teammate's got double his arc tear here. So we're relatively fine. I am under, and I'm assuming he's under quite a bit too. Yeah, 405. This is a little bit of a risky play. We might not win because of it. One sixty resend. Kind of a bad resend though, as I explained. Uh, brutes are not really the play when someone's got this much uh this much backline damage dealers. Not frontline, but we're gonna get a good uh, good send here. If anything, I pro leak. How is he looking? Pro leak. That's fine. I should hold. I'm holding. No problem. He went Phoenix here. That's actually really good for us. A Phoenix on my guy is really good for us. It means that he's gonna be pretty weak this wave. So what we're going to do is we're going to send probably something like a centaur here. I want a lot of damage dealer options. We're going to double drop antlers here. Again, we have decent damage. We need more tank. What I'm also then going to do, I dropped a centaur, I'm also going to drop a safety mole. Safety mole is really strong against things like fire elementals um, because they're going to deal that like long splashy damage. So every single one I send is better. Um, every every single mole I send is, is just value. Um, I'm also going to send, and this is going to sound a little funny, I'm going to send a lizard. I know the lizard's gonna die right away, but this late in the game, you want to delay their delay their damage dealers and the lizards as much as you can. So two lizards here should delay the damage of the wa of the wave a little longer. You notice how now they're both attacking. One's attacking in the back. That delay is huge. That means I was able to get more damage down onto the wave longer, and then centaur is also just eating up every one of his tanks. So that bot leaked really bad. The other bot looks like it might hold though. My my teammate's not sending enough. He's leaking. I'm gonna pro leak probably, if not hold. I think this big leak though might be enough. Oh, he is leaking. He is leaking. Just very slowly. I'm pro leaking this or holding one of the two. I can't tell. Very close. I think this is enough for us to win though. Um, Centaur coming to King is, is pretty huge. That's a huge damage dealer that we got through to King. Centaur, though, really good against mowing down all these really bad tanks on the wave. And that is GG. Just like that, we now started with Grawl and won a game. Now, this game is kind of indicative of how Grawl games in general go. You want to try to Grawl into other units and then get rid of Grawl. For the most part, Grawl isn't super good value mid to late game, aside from its um, its Ocean Templar for healing. Outside of that, Grawling into a stronger unit early game, allowing you to push and then hold some bigger sends, tends to be the stronger play. It allows us to capitalize early game on some bad bot sends, um, you know, like the six, 60 send here on four allowed us to push two. And then I was able to then stabilize off the king ups because of that. 
But for the most part, that's how I'd play a Grarl. Hope you guys found this informational, um, educational, some word, shape, or form there. Um, if you like this video, though, please give it a like, sub to my channel, and uh, check my other videos out. I got a lot of educational content. Um, always comment below on things you'd like to see. Catch you guys next time. Peace.